Hello, I'm pleased to welcome you all to the 2020 Brooklyn Book Festival for New Works, a Poetry Reading. Today, we're joined by poets Aria Eber, Pianelli Antigua, Ricardo Alberto Maldonado, and John Murillo. Before we begin, I want to let our audience members know that these poets' books can be purchased in the link below. Thank you for supporting their work. My name is Nikai Paredes, and I'm the Senior Programs Manager at the Academy of American Poets. For those of you who don't know us and our work, uh, we're the nation's leading champions of poets, poetry, and poetry organizations. We also produce Poets.org, Originated National Poetry Month, which is celebrated every April, and publish the popular Poem A Day series, among many other free programs and online resources. And now I'm honored and thrilled to introduce our readers, starting with Aria Eber. Arya was raised in Germany, where she was born to Afghan refugees. Her debut book, Hard Damage, from University of Nebraska Press, won the Prairie Schooner Book Prize in Poetry and a Whiting Award. Her poems are forthcoming or have appeared in The New Yorker, Kenyan Review, The Yale Review, New Republic, and elsewhere. She completed her MFA at NYU and holds fellowships from the Wisconsin Institute of Creative Writing, Dickinson House, and Kundiman. She is currently a Stegner Fellow at Stanford University. Arya? Thank you, Nikai, um, and thank you everyone for inviting me. Um, it's always been a dream of mine to participate at the Brooklyn Book Festival, and even though this is virtual now, I'm super excited. <laughs> um, I'll be reading three poems, um, all from my book, Heart Damage, and I'll just start now. Reading Rilke in Berlin. Into English, I splintered the way my father clutched his valise at the airport, defeated and un-American. It took me 12 strange springs to know nothing occurs out of a sudden. How do I let it go? Little has been purloined from me and the ghosts of childhood still sibilate by which I mean nobody has touched me on my innermost parts. At the accent reduction class, my teacher instructed me to invert my tongue like in love. So I lay at a pavement, under your elegy, in a bridge. Such starkness the want to put inside me a perfect sentence. What would have Lou Salome done? I absolved every year around the sun, knowing that there is an animal smell hooked to a line leading past a border I am not going to cross. But what is exile exactly? What exactitude? Father says hour for hour, allo for hello. Father says is good, don't come back, eat fruit, green card. If I could explain to him the difference between exist and exit, maybe others too will hear the law in a law. When they asked my mother, where are you from? She smiled and replied, fine, how are you? Oh, I shoved my hand right through the officer's mouth and ripped out his tongue. Then under my pillow, I placed it and waited for it to bloom new my blood. Um, uh, the next poem I'm reading <laughs> is set in Paris, um, which is where some of my family lives. And I think that's all the background information you need. Afghan funeral in Paris. The aunts here clink Malbec glasses and parade their grief with musky, expensive scents that whisper in elevators and hallways. Each natural passing articulates the unnatural. Every aunt has a son who fell or a daughter who hid in rubble for two years until that knock of officers holding a bin bag filled with a dress and bones. But what do I know? I get pedicures and eat madlins while reading Swan's Way. 
When I tell one aunt I'd like to go back, she screams, it is not yours to want. Have some cream cheese with that, says another. Oh, what wonder to be alive and see my father's footprints in his sister's garden. He's furiously scissoring the hyacinths, saying all the time when the tele-researcher asks him, how often do you think your life is a mistake? During the procession, the aunt's wails vibrate. Wires full of crows and heavy wind. I hate every plumed minute of it. God invented everything out of nothing, but the nothing shines through, said Paul Valéry. Paris never charmed me, but when some stranger asks if it stinks in Afghanistan, I am so shocked that I hug him. And he lets me, his ankles briefly brushing against mine. Um, okay, I'm going to read my last poem now, which also includes reading Rilke, um, which funnily enough <laughs> is a big part of my first book um, because I think he was the first poet that I fell in love with at a very young age. Um, yeah, and uh, this time I was reading Rilke in Wisconsin. So the title is creatively, reading Rilke at Lake Mendota, Wisconsin. I have relinquished my shame now that I have mastered what was lent to my name. Three languages, one of them dead. It is hard to misbelove all that isn't as absurd as my forked childhood. First of the menses, Padar's stethoscope, to have hours upon hours to marvel at words like driftwood, trope, misbeloved. To miss my life in Kabul is to tongue pears laced with needles. I had no life in Kabul. How then can I trust my mind's long corridor, its longing for before? I have a faint depression polluting my heart, sings the lake. That there is music in everything, if you tune into it, devastates me. Even trauma sounds like Traum, the German word for dream. Even in the dirty atrium, Lou was waiting tenderly for Rilke. René, he signed his letters, the apostrophe full of love. Oh, in love, I was always and providential. But what I want is not of love. Its meatless mojo and Lyman bore me. I do not want to open, neither for food nor men. For loneliness, I keep a stone to kiss. At night, the entirety of me arches, not towards the black square of absence, but towards you. Thank you. Thanks so much, Aria. Again, the book is called Hard Damage and it's from University of Nebraska, Nebraska Press. Um, our next reader is Vianelli Antigua. Vianelli is a Dominican American poet and educator born and raised in Massachusetts. Her debut collection, Ugly Music from Yes Yes Books was the winner of the Pamet River Prize and a Whiting Award. She received her BA in English from the University of Massachusetts Lowell where she won the Jack Kerouac Creative Writing Scholarship and received her MFA at NYU, where she was awarded a Global Research Initiative Fellowship to Florence, Italy. She is the recipient of additional fellowships from Canto Mundo, Community of Writers, and the Fine Arts Work Center Summer Program. Her work has been nominated for both the Pushcart Prize and Best of the Net. Her poems can be found in Washington Square Review, Bennington Review, The Adroit Journal, and elsewhere. Dianelli. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, I'm so excited to be here and to be a part of the Brooklyn Book Festival and to be reading with all of you, you folk today. Um, I'm going to be reading three poems from Ugly Music and then um, perhaps one new poem. 
free education. I listen to podcasts to learn about feminism, watch porn to make sure I'm doing it right. I dance on the bar because coyote ugly, because these shoes and this drink. I'm almost 30. And I still think Bloody Mary is a game with a mirror. Sometimes she appears at 2 a.m. Sometimes she's in the toilet, his reflection before the flush. There is a truth in this magic. The time I took plan B, then the other time I took plan B, I bled for two months. There could have been a mother in me. And I told no one, except the man at Tacos Lupita, who asked what I wanted in my burrito. And I think I said, baby. I think I spun around three times and whispered a name. And there was no floor. When I fell, when a queen flew from my womb, it was glass and napkins and the doctor saying, wake up, wake up. Uh, the next one is um, I have poems throughout my book um, titled Diary Entry, and they follow um, a number. And all of those poems were um, collage poems written from old journals um, that I've been writing in since I was nine years old. Um, so I've collected, you know, language from each of those journals and created these diary entry poems. So this is diary entry number four, Huzzle. Then I did something I didn't think I could do. Dear God, I thought about suicide then my algebra homework, then maybe something else godly, how I was going to fast and pray for language to explain last Wednesday. I'm no God but I'm trying to dust off the ashes of the change. I got my period and I feel less godlike, an unclean romance in my body, how I cupped my hands to catch whatever came, a little bit of God's blood escaping my vagina, or how the idea of cutting a wrist might lead to more goddess, Dr. Rosenblum says, I need a counselor, says, I am officially broken, but I will pick up a knife to cut the God spell out of me. I tell him there's a mouth in my underwear wadded with tissue. It sings beautiful things when it's touched. It sings, oh God. Okay. And the next poem I'll be reading is um, after Alberto Rios. Everything's been said, but one last thing about the ocean. It doesn't love back. I watch two women on paddle boards balance the waves and their bodies, pushing through water to propel themselves forward. And it reminds me of high school science. When I learned about Newton's laws of motion, especially the third one, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. But I don't watch alone. In this coastal town, I eat lunch with two new friends, both artists, and we contemplate the existence of water sports. One woman on the paddleboard falls into the ocean and pulls the other in with her. They laugh, and so do we. But then we talk about trust, how unforgiving the ocean is, the water, and then what's beneath. How all week we've seen the shark flag waving on the shoreline, or how we've been warned to never swim with the seal. And I confess, I can't swim. These are lessons my mother never taught me. Together, we've never been submerged in water, 
or maybe we have. At the church baptism party, when we waited in the pool, when a minister laid his hands on us, it's us in the name of Jesus. And I stopped wearing my gold flower earrings after that, the center emerald already missing from one of them. Then I threw away all my denim jeans and my Backstreet Boys cassettes. Everything has been said. But one last thing about faith, it's seeing a shark flag and still jumping in, or believing that a shell washed up on shore can hold all matter of good intention when placed on a bookshelf, looked at from time to time. It's believing you will be dragged under by what's closest to you, won't even see it coming. And this last one I'm going to read for you is, is new um, and it is titled Diary Entry Number Two Quarantine Sonnet. Every once in a while, especially at night, and the time it takes to mourn deaths and letters, if I'm dreaming of the theater or the Egyptian exhibit at the Met, if I'm dressed in a sweater, if I'm tempted to kiss the green on the side of the road. Every once in a while, especially after flushing the toilet and the time it takes to make a lover of the neighbor's door and the time it takes a little leaven to leaven the whole lump. If the breeze can't keep the secret at the lake, at the grocery store, at the church, that's when I watch from my window, America riding a tricycle of ruin, and the schools spill out her mouth, and the library is closed, and the clouds are closed. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dianelli. Um, Dianelli was reading from uh, Ugly Music uh, from Yes Yes Books. Please pick up a copy. Um, up next is Ricardo Alberto Maldonado. He was born and raised in Puerto Rico. Ricardo is the author of the life assignment from Four Way Books, the co-editor of Puerto Rico and Mi Corazon, and the recipient of fellowships from Canto Mundo, the New York Foundation for the Arts and Queer Arts Mentorship. He lives in New York, where he serves as managing director at the 92nd Streetwise Unterberg Poetry Center. Thank you. Hello from Brooklyn. Buenos dias. I hope you're all doing well. Um, in this book that just came out, I feel like I, uh, I have a feeling that I'm reading something like uh, a god, a god whose agency we see as an extension of ourselves and the limits of that. With that in mind, my first poem, The Commodities Market, Where one finds poetry, one finds the Lord, God of Epic, a golden instrument on our Lord's plums, God the body, pelt of our Lord, red cap for a red God, tree of the heavens. Remember, Jose Daniel, the God we engraved on our desks, Christ of our Lord, Christ of our children, the Lord's denominator in the Lord's arithmetic, a pair of children's scissors, God at our borders, the salt of our Lord, God's ocean of cotton, of sugar, a nickname for God, the Lord Elephant, Lord Mule, Lord's Acres, Hospital Lord, Texas for God, Alabama, God's Sea of Blue Tarps, our Lord's November and August for our God, Roses of God for the Roses, Clouds for the Lord. Will the gods disappear, their arms full of roses? The wall of our Lord, our Lord in God's roses, Lord's wound flowering red, one heaven of fog clouding faces for a heaven of roses, a heaven for God, our Lord and the darkness of numbers, Lord's icebox, Lord's cages for the children of God, an armful of roses for roses of God, God's labor, God's Wednesday as labor and the labor of God. A poem for two of my nephews. A bird for Felipe, a bird for Damian. 
A man dies in this world by a fist of trees more than by our love. When I was young, muscles were carved from the minerals so we could be forgiven. And yet, at the greeting of the birds, I loved the work, loved its respite with which I wrote the silt of our fears. It rains this September in our world. I've gained more from its wear. Who am I to be yours in this compulsory century but a father without possessive? I loved, I loved, I love presently. I fly its unavoidable flag. That trade a match for us in the cold, a room in September, our whitening, whitening bones, humid in our melancholy. There's nothing more to do but to make it ours. I waited with my lamp to assemble birds for you, then released them as if I were a child to understand you, like the fresh water that washed over my hands. In defense of the life assignment. I started at the surface feeling about my face, the law jawbone my mother had given me as weapon against austerity. Two decades before my father had died and I was desperate under summer's isosceles. A fragile machine descended with a yellowing haze on the city. Whom had I been then but the sediment inside that thing I named Ricardo Alberto. Blessed is he, blessed in the reddening of medical pins, blessed under flooring yokes. I venerated my mother at Centro Medico, her prayer cards at midnight, the saffron of her blood tearing as it coursed, a thick mass on concrete inside coral. Mother, today it snows in another city besieged by comet tails. You breathe that day, the sharp instrument of men on your heart, waited, they waited, your lungs. I remember the wings of your lungs. It was midnight when I went in search of angels in the shoes of the sick near the gates of heaven. On the seventh day, we all take repose in the kingdom of the sick. Blessed are they, blessed, the cold comfort of a wind rushing over teeth. Blessed the long corridors of heaven. Blessed the gelatin in refrigerators, the instant coffee. Blessed our sentence of silver, of flowers. Blessed may they be blessed. I give you my heart. I find myself on my feet with 15 leaves. Everything carries its own light on the walls. I woke up to slaughter, my heart opening between cemeteries of moon, the parasites to drizzle, the moth crowning the undergrowth with immense sadness. I knew death when I dressed in my uniform. I found the index of my solitude, my country, and its legal jargon, its piety, its fiction. Yes, it loves me really. I give my blood as the blood of all fish. And to end, uh, lesionado. Maybe this will be a poem about power, breathing, rereading whatever shape the intelligence takes. Somewhere, somehow, the men, the state, somewhere seems to destroy, only we should be beautiful and practical. Finding beauty will stand everywhere. Among two Victorias, my brother and I, among them, home for its noun, home for its soul, one, two, three, four, I among them. Maybe this is a poem about power. Maybe this is a poem about love. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ricardo. Uh, again, the book is called The Life Assignment from Four Way Books. And now our final reader is John Murillo. John is the author of the poetry collections Up Jump the Boogie, and his newest work is called Contemporary American Poetry. That's contemporary with a K and American with a K. His honors include a Pushcart Prize, the J. Howard and Barbara M. J. Wood Prize from the Poetry Foundation and fellowships from the National Endowment for the Arts, the Breadloaf Writers Conference, Fine Arts Work Center in Provincetown, Cave Cotton Foundation, and the Wisconsin Institute for Creative Writing. His work was also included in Best American Poetry 2017, 2019, and 2020. 
He is an assistant professor of English at Wesleyan University and teaches in the low resident residency MFA program at Sierra Nevada University. He lives in Brooklyn. John. Hey, thank you. Um, this is cool, man. Um, Aria, I've never known your work before, but I'm a fan now, so I can't wait to go out and get your book. Dianelli, uh, Ugly Music is a Monster. I'm teaching it right now in both my courses. Um, so this is dope. And Ricardo, man, I'm a friend and a fan of you. And it's weird that we've um, never really had a chance to read like this before. Um, so I'm really digging this. So thank you, Nikai and the Brooklyn Book Festival for putting this together. Um, I'm going to read just one poem, uh, but it's a long poem. Uh, so stay with me, yeah. Upon reading that Eric Dolphy transcribed even the calls of certain species of birds. I think first of two sparrows I met when walking home late night years ago in another city not unlike this. The one bird frantic attacking I thought the way she swooped down, circled my head and flailed her wings in my face. How she seemed to scream each time I swung, how she dashed back and forth between me and a blood red Corolla parked near the opposite curb. How finally I understood. I spied another bird also calling, his foot inexplicably caught in the car's closed door, beating his whole bird body against it, trying, it appeared, to bang himself free. And who knows how long he'd been there, flailing. Who knows? He and the other I mistook at first for a bat. They called to me. Something between squawk and chirp, something between song and prayer to do something, anything. And like any good God, I disappeared. Not indifferent exactly, but with things to do and most likely on my way home from another heartbreak. Call it 1997 and say I'm several thousand miles from home, by which I mean those were the days I made of everyone a love song. By which I mean I was lonely and unrequited. But that's not quite it either. Truth is, I did manage to find a few to love me, but couldn't always love them back. The Rasta law professor, the firefighter's wife, the burlesque dancer whose daughter blackened drawings with M's to mean the sky was full of birds the day her daddy died. I think his widow said he drowned one morning on a fishing trip. Anyway, I'm digressing. But if you asked that night, did I mention it was night? Why I didn't even try to jimmy the lot to spring the sparrow? I couldn't say truthfully that it had anything to do with envy, with wanting a woman to plead as deeply for me as these sparrows did one for the other. No, I'd have said something instead about the neighborhood itself. The car thief shot a block and a half east the week before, or about the men I came across nights prior, sweat slicked and shirtless, grappling in the middle of the street, the larger one's chest pressed to the back of the smaller, bruised and bleeding both. I know you thought this was about birds, but stay with me. I left them both in the street, the same street where I'd leave the sparrows, the men embracing, and for all one knows, they could have been lovers. The one whispering an old, old tune into the ear of the other, baby, baby, don't leave me this way. I left the men where I'd leave the sparrows and their song, and as I walked away, I heard one of the men call to me, please, or help, or brother, 
or some such. And I didn't break stride, not one bit. It's how I've learned to save myself. Let me try this another way. Call it 1977 and say I'm back west, south central Los Angeles, my mother and father at it again, but this time in the street, broad daylight and all the neighbors watching. One, I think his name was Sonny, runs out from his duplex to pull my father off. You see where I'm going with this. My mother crying out, fragile as a sparrow. Sonny fighting my father, fragile as a sparrow. And me, years later, trying to get it all down. As much for you, I'm saying, as for me. Sonny catches a left, lies flat on his back, blood starting to pool in his own wife wailing, my mother wailing, and traffic back now half a block. Horns, whistles, and soon sirens. 1977, summer, and all the trees full of birds. Hundreds, I swear. And since I'm the one writing it, I'll tell you they were crying. Which brings me back to Dolphy and his transcribing. The jazz man, I think, wanted only to get it down pure, to get it down exact. The animal racking itself against a car steel door. The animals in the trees reporting. The animals we make of ourselves and one another, flailing, failing. Stay with me now. Days after the dust up, my parents took me to the park. And in this park was a pond. And in this pond were birds, not sparrows, but swans. And my father spread a blanket and brought from a basket some apples and a paring knife. Summertime, my mother wore sunglasses and long sleeves. My father, now sober, cursed himself for leaving the radio, but my mother forgave him and said as she caressed the back of his hand that we could just listen to the swans. And we listened, and I watched. Two birds coupling, one beating its wings as it mounted the other. Summer 1977, I listened and watched. When my parents made love late into that night, I covered my ears in the next room, scanning the encyclopedia for swans. It meant nothing to me, then at least. But did you know the collective noun for swans? is a lamentation and is a lamentation not its own species of song what a woman wails punch drunk in the street or what a widow might sing learning her man was drowned by swans a lamentation of them imagine the capsized boat the panicked man struck about the eyes nose and mouth each time he comes up for air Imagine the birds coasting away and the waters suddenly calm, either trumpet swans or mutes, the dead man's wife running for help, crying to any who'd listen, a lamentation in a city busy saving itself. I'm digressing, sure. But did you know that to digress means to stray from the flock? When I left my parents' house, I never looked back, by which I mean I made like a god and disappeared. As when I left the sparrows and the copulating swans, as when someday I'll leave this city, it's every flailing, it's every animal song. Thank you. Thanks so much, John. Um, 
And thank you again, Aria, Dianelli, and Ricardo for this reading and for sharing your work. Um, for everyone watching, please remember you can order these poets' books. I'll read it again. Hard Damage by Aria Eber, Ugly Music by Dianelli and Higua, Life Assignment by Ricardo Alberto Maldonado, and Contemporary American Poetry by John Murillo. You can click on the link below to get these books. Um, and finally, please consider also making a donation to the Brooklyn Book Festival, which is celebrating its 15th year of presenting free literary programming. Thanks so much again, everyone, for joining us. <laughs>